Today we're diving into a film that follows in the footsteps of a legacy spanning nine previous entries, some mocked, others revered. This vast saga, rich in lore and backed by a devoted fanbase, sets a towering standard. I'm talking about Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, the latest installment following a highly successful sci-fi trilogy. With a hefty budget of $160 million and groundbreaking production techniques combining on-site shooting with state-of-the-art motion capture, expectations were sky high. Could this film falter or does it rise to greatness? Fred and I hit the theatres to find out on release day, and now, just moments later, we're ready to share our thoughts. Welcome to episode 7 of the Mate Night Podcast, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, should you watch it? A critical new chapter in a storied franchise, raise it out of 10 by the Mate Night Podcast, 3, 2, 1, go. 7.8. 7.0. Okay, why has it got a high score? Yeah, so, for me, I went into the film having watched the previous three of the rebooted franchise, um, in the preceding week, really engaged with the lore, absorbed as much as I could about the film. And I felt that having watched the other ones, the world building and the journey that Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes took me on was something that I just felt really invested in. I really enjoyed the decisions that Wes made to expand the universe. And I liked, there are a few points which there are a few things that they added, a few details, a few decisions he made about the world. Um, and he had a real free license and free reign to go through in, in as much as of a way as he wanted, given he'd given himself a bit of a time skip. Uh, and and just the, the decision around how these characters that he introduced would act, what situations would have taken place following the 300 years post Caesar, um, and how things like... Um, mythos uh, and societies had developed post our last entry into the franchise so that was the where it was set and me i just really enjoyed how he went about it and and i felt that it actually was really one that took a step on from the last films in the franchise uh, and i just had a real enjoyment for it was did the world building take a step on from the yeah so with the world building specifically, and um, just to stress, we're going to do non-spoilers here, so we're going to go into our thoughts around the film, um, whether you should watch it, uh, why we think you should or shouldn't. Uh, and for me, one of the things specifically that made it an additive experience was the world building. Like, the choices that they made for the characters and for, or well, not even for the characters, but for, for the scenarios... And the, and the interesting like wrinkles that they got their their newly created characters into, like the society of apes that we are introduced to and, and are our kind of protagonist um, protagonist crew. <laughs> they have very interesting niches that have been clearly developed and made for the film, um, and I just really was invested in it. I just found it really interesting the the decisions they made. Yeah, it's a it's a great franchise for world building because it's that perfect sci-fi situation where it's like, take this interesting situation, this interesting idea, in this case, switch ape and human intellect almost, yeah. and uh, and basically just see what happens. Um, for me, with the world with the world building, obviously you can tell from the trailers that it that they are still very much a primitive tribe. Mm. It's set 300 years on. And one of the things that, it's not like a gripe for me, but one of the things where I was kind of looking at and I was like, I'm not sure that that's where I would have gone with the world building was the lack of advancement that the apes had. And I was just kind of wondering whether you felt the same way at all about that. It's interesting. I hadn't thought about this. And and this is something that, uh, it when we originally had this conversation, it wasn't something that came up. And I do... I do think that it's a, a very fair point that they had access to all human technology before the the death of Caesar and, and in the first three films. Um, and now we're 300 years beyond that point. And Wes specifically in interviews that we've watched made a point of saying, okay, for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which is the second film in the, in the rebooted trilogy, um, we see an ape and human society that's almost cast back to the stone age. And now we're looking at apes that are in the sort of bronze age. So they're starting to see some sort of technical development, but you're also seeing very disparate 
um, groups form uh, with their own ways of going about things, their habits, their routines and, and their ways of life. And I enjoyed the variation and the story that he was able to tell, the creativity he was able to have. But I had never actually thought of it as a, okay, so why didn't they just step on from where they Why did they have to go so many steps backwards? And I'm not sure. I don't know actually know why they made that choice. Have you got any ideas? Well, I, I've got a whole uh, segment on it later where I purposely go and explore what I think would have happened. And the honest truth is that I think that the reason they chose to do it is because it's fiction and that's what they wanted to do. Mm. And the question isn't always what would happen, but what would I like to happen? And I think basically that's what they've done here. I think he probably had a vision for the film and that's kind of where that started. Because it's like you say, there is an abundance of stuff left around and it's just, you go 300 years later and it's completely neglected. It just seems unlikely to me. But again, that's not, I don't think that's a, a problem with the film, but when the world building is one of the things that stands out to you, it it seems like an important question to ask is like, well, how how well thought through was the world, the world building, you know, you, we've got three films of information about where the world was 300 years ago. And then this is what they've come out with. To me, it felt like quite a serious inaccuracy almost. It's a fair point. And part of, we, we went into, and we go into like a, a ranking of the films and one of them in particular, I was quite I liked less than than Jamie, and part of the reason was of my issues with the plot points of how unrealistic it was. And we're talking about a story which has apes taking over humans, so I I it's understand sci-fi. the trappings of its realism, but still, certain points really griped me around this particular film. And it's funny you mentioned that because having thought about that, that may, that's something that is a bit silly, and I enjoy it for the fact that it has the freedom to create new ways of living that are inventive and creative. Um, But realistically, if you think, if you scratch under the surface a bit, would the new society of apes that are, as we've seen from the, the previous films, as, you know, maybe not more, but almost as, or if not as intelligent as humans, and they have been very aware that humans did live in this world is it's not like there was a nuclear holocaust which was the case in the original franchise of the 60s and 70s uh, these humans died of a pandemic and these apes were they, they, Parties them, they, saw, they were there. They were under the you know originally they were under their um ownership for a long time and then they broke out of that and so we left it off and that a lot of these apes had guns. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Some of these apes were weaponized right. yeah. uh, as the humans started to become more primitive, which is which is where you kind of leave it at the Caesar trilogy. Yeah. Um, we're not going to spoil Kingdom, but I'll be honest with you, I've already gone heavy into spoiling the, uh, the original trilogy. So just be aware of that. Um, but I think that then to have 300 years into the future what they've basically done is almost gone back to square one. That was like the decision. What would happen if we went back to square one? And you see that in the world and the um, the scene where it's set, the setting. We are in an environment where all of the cities have basically become overgrown with um, plant life and have been naturalized. Um, it's almost as if there was some sort of nuclear war and then what would have happened three 300 years after that? But with the proviso of there being, they weren't an interested life. in. They weren't interested in integrating technology. They just decided, for whatever reason, the ape said, "We're not. We don't, we're not going to do that," and just went and did their own thing. Which, like, it's science fiction, you know. Like, like at the end of the day, if that's what the writer wants to do, then fair enough. And it doesn't spoil the film. You mentioned the scene, the the that it is set, and it's this kind of post apocalyptic. And I just want to say that is a very beautiful world that they made. Like it was stunning to look at the, and I'm, I'm talking about the CGI. I'm talking about the digital art that they created. It was such a cool environment to have made this kind of with the building, the, the way they turned the skyscrapers, they, they made the skyscraper scrapers 
almost derelict and overgrown, but still structurally there. And so it almost looks like, it almost looks like man-made like hills. They're like artificial hills. They're just kind of, but they're, you know, they, they're angular instead of naturally round. And it, But it's still very much part of the environment. And, and we're talking about a, particularly the rebooted series, which we've all, we've both watched. Um, I remember when that was coming out, it kind of being pioneering in terms of, technological advancement um particularly around the use of mocap which it had built on the you know, it was standing on the shoulders of giants in the 2000s with starting with lord of the rings and then a lot of the peter jackson films like king kong and and of course the avatar films as well and um, but around that time i mean the original avatar was 2009 and then 2011 was um the first planet of the apes film they, I remember them really kicking on the progression of mocap, uh, and it's building on the back of that. One thing in particular that I think sets it apart from other kind of sci-fi, um, or f- it really falls into sci-fi, doesn't it? Other like sci-fi films is that whereas they may be in a maybe a dystopian world or or on a faraway planet, the um, elements of planet of the apes that ground it in your own world make it very interesting because you can clearly see that this was a human you know this is the influence of humanity in our own world and just added to it is that little flavor of what it would look like if basically humans became useless it's in in many ways for me it's kind of one of my my favorite sorts of stories where as i said earlier the author basically just went take this interesting idea, what would happen? And that's such like a cool way of exploring a world. And like I say, it's not necessarily what I would have done. That for me wasn't the reason why it got 7.0. The main reason it got 7.0 for me was kind of twofold. Firstly, I thought that um, the thing that's, the thing that really stands out to me in films generally are either the plot or and or the characters and the plot felt kind of pointless to me i didn't really i wasn't really like there were a lot of issues with the very core plot there were a lot of issues for me with it i I won't actually i won't go into detail but the plot felt a little recycled and a little bit um almost it kind of finishes a plot and then starts another one halfway through. And and that for me was less enjoyable. And then the character thing, part of the thing that I enjoyed so much about the reboot series was Caesar is a really cool character that the protagonist. Now they've left room for growth in this, but for me, they left a little too much room for growth because Noah's just a bit of a wet lettuce. He's very, I mean, you know, he's righteous and I like the fact that he's got integrity and all that, but At the end of the day, he's not cool. Like, he's not a cool person to be following around for two and a half hours. So to go into a bit of detail as this non-spoiler, for people who are going to go and thinking of watching this, this is your basic, your your main characters. You've got Noah, who's the protagonist, um, who is the, the, like, lead ape from a um, society of, a civilization of apes that are... Uh, have, have quite an interesting relationship with eagles. I don't. I don't want to go into any more detail than that. But that that's part of this world building that I really liked and was invested in. They set the scene of this really interesting ape, you know, uh, collective. Not not even a society, but just a, a yeah. small group. Of it's apes. a clan, I think. They're a clan. To it. Yeah, yeah. Well said. So this clan of apes. Uh, that's Noah. He's he's your lead guy, and then through a series of. Um, uh, through a situation it ends up becoming that he gets um he he goes on a bit of a quest and then there are the two other main i I say the main protagonist within his his group um so may who you'll have seen in the uh the trailers is the human character uh, and then there's also um raka it, yeah, that's it. The orangutan. Is that right? Yeah. Raka. Um, and yeah, so those are the th- the kind of trio of, of main characters that we have. And then the only other one I'd say of note specifically would be Proximus Caesar. So these four then, obviously you've given your piece on um, Noah. Walk me through your thoughts on the other ones. Yeah, uh, Raka's awesome, but he's not as 
good as Maurice, even though they're very, very different characters. I feel like both have managed to put a cool orangutan in there, and I really like Raka. And and just to for anyone who isn't as familiar with the world, Maurice is... The orangutan in the reboot series, the one with Caesar, the one that this follows on from 300 years later. So yeah. they've got... They've another, got a formula, don't they? They've with, got an orangutan, orangutan who's kind of the side character, the Sid from Ice Age, the, you know, it's that a bit kind of... comic relief. Yeah, that's it. And And you know what, like, it's hard not to enjoy those characters and he was good. Um, May, I very much was left left wanting, but I think that the thing with May, right, is you naturally assume that for some reason, because she's the human, she should be a very important character. And I think the reason that I felt a disappointment around May is because of that. Um, Actually, she's not really... She's not that, like, she's kind of, she's just a little bit, there wasn't a ton of interest and depth and she wasn't especially cool and she was, there was just kind of, she didn't have a hell of a lot of lines and she just kind of, she was an important part of the plot, but she wasn't a terribly important agent in it, so to speak. I yeah, she's, she's very much uh, an every woman yeah. figure, um, hit your mark. Say your lines. You made a bits. really interesting point with May about the language and the accent she used before. Yeah. Remind so, me what that was. So essentially, it all came, it spawned from Ra- um, Proximus, the man playing Proximus, has licensed to be adventurous. And May, the um, Freya Allen playing May, she very much paint by numbers. I- I'm not going to blame her for this. No. Accent wise, particularly she had a real chance to go for something. She almost had a free hit because you're talking about 300 years since anyone's really been speaking. And so she's in a position where she could have really crafted an interesting tone, American based on some specific dialect, whatever she wanted. And it would have, I think, added a real nuance to the character. And no one could have no one could have said why did you do that because there's there's real um there's real scope and, and reason to creative license and that. yeah i i felt like they probably maybe she didn't have a choice yeah to, but but you, you whoever almost feel is for, whoever decided not to go ahead with that you're absolutely bang on the money that would have been really cool especially because we had two kind of every member figures i think noah maybe less so although you found him a bit of a, a wet blanket I, I you know he's still at the end of the day an ape with a bit more of an interesting it's just not caesar for, for me you know that yeah. was more it. it was just kind of yeah and i think yeah you're look going into this you're not going to have anyone replace the character if you like caesar if you like the films for caesar no one reaches those heights but Part of the reason I liked it so much is because I was pleasantly surprised by how much they introduced, how much um, they went for and how much of that worked. And particularly, although the plot, yeah, it's not amazing. They've got this world that I've really come to enjoy and they've really expanded it. And they also littered it with something that is now becoming a bit of a staple of these Planet of the Apes films when I watch them. But there are a couple of just really for me like almost out of your seat moments where i was like i can't believe that's happened like subverted expectation moments but brilliantly done um and we can't go into them without spoiling the film but i must say i remember there are a couple of times this this happened the two moments in particular i'm thinking of in the film where i was like wow that was awesome (laughs) that was really awesome and that's that's heightened it. That's more a very me. important thing to get right in a sure. story. When you're telling a story, like ex- surprising and subver- subverting expectations is, you know, key. Like you can't go for a whole story and have nothing surprise you. It just wouldn't have anywhere near the same effect. But I think that if we're um, if we're going to go for the whole should you watch it perspective, and this is something that we we ended up coming to a bit of a a different view on because. I admitted last time, and I still hold, <laughs> I still hold myself accountable to this this opinion that my enjoyment was really born out of having watched the original films, like a few days before. Yeah, well, a few days. I, I think for me, the reason why I was so pl- I enjoyed it a lot. Part of it was the pleasant surprise of they've. I'm entering a world which I know, but it's it's very different, and that was like 
a positive experience for me. Uh, we've spoken about Wes's reasoning behind doing the 300 year time skip because he felt like he says in an, an interview, which we, we referenced last time uh, on YouTube, which would definitely recommend you watch um, following the film. Uh, if you like it, of course, where he goes into how difficult it was for him to take up this mantle. And he was really considering not doing it until he came up with the idea of having a big time skip where he's able to have his own creative expression, but also he can he can reference and honour the old films, but he doesn't have to adhere to them. Uh, and he made a real valid point about the whole kind of human condition around three being attracted to and four. Yeah, and I think it was a great decision because the fourth, if you've watched the other three, seems like it's, if you've watched the other three and you enjoy the other three, I think you're going to enjoy the fourth because it adds just extra flavor to it. Um, whilst not being tied into like, for instance, can you imagine following the third film? If they'd have, basically just done a fourth done a new story around oh, it's, it's Cornelius around it's, Cornelius it's, it's, he's a kid and he's setting up and there's another problem they've got to solve and that would have been a real pale there's no real change in the universe setting no. there's no I mean that's really one of the main like one of the most important things to understand about this movie is one of the things that it does better than other films is creating a universe that's what you're doing you're there to watch a very beautiful rendition of a very interesting universe and watching the first three films massively enhances that experience because you understand it. Um, so, yeah, I think um, the question of should you watch Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is should really be split into two questions. Should you watch it alone? Like, if you've never watched the other three, should you watch Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? What do you think? Probably not. It's probably not, probably not worth, worth your time. Not, yeah, not I mean, massively. you could. It, you can. Like, uh, you, it's, should. Not, it's not a bad film, but... Okay, no. now, if you have watched or if you are inclined to watch the other three, should you watch Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Yeah, for yeah, sure. I would say I think so, it yeah. really adds. If you enjoyed the first three, I think you'll really get something out of the directions they've went, uh, the changes they've made, uh, and building upon the, a world that you already enjoy. Um with an inter with an interesting variety of new characters and new new lore for you to understand. One of the things I, I don't know if we delved into enough with it though. The problem I guess is does it have enough on its own? Like when Jamie says, if you're looking at it being like, I haven't watched the others, this film might be quite good. Should I watch it? Should I watch it? I feel like the world building is quite reliant on you already knowing the other things like they go some way it doesn't stand up on its own yeah. as well because because a lot of it is kind of um a lot of it is reliant on particularly the the caesar storyline and how that affected the future events and and really maybe you kind of get it would be one way you got to the end of the film and be like okay so the caesar was quite important and exactly and it would be interesting to know a bit more i feel like if you think if you're in two minds about it watch the watch the first few films and then see if you enjoy it yeah watch the first one film like you'll enjoy it so start much more. the series at the start without a doubt yeah 